such an asshole. How you kids doing? All right. I uh, got a unique question here. A blessed Sunday to you, dear Cappy. I currently teach finance at a place at a college. This will be my last year in higher ed for a variety of reasons, but primarily because I think it's an immoral industry. I'd still take the money, man. I still take the money. These kids, look, I know you didn't ask about this, but look, these kids are going to go to college anyway. You know why? Because that's all they have. And the two ladies that actually go become tradesmen or work hard or anything like that. Like, this is their birthright. You got to understand how spoiled the American popular kids are. I, I don't mean the rich kids in the burbs, certainly those too. But every every kid, no matter what your poverty level or rich level, like the rich kids are like, oh, my God, you're going to save the world. You're from Marin County. Yeah. And the poor kids, oh, my God, you're black or Hispanic or you're bi or whatever. And, and it's just amazing. You got to fight the patriarchy or, or the evil white man or whatever, whatever it is. And you all have to go to like, I'm going to save the world. <laughs> okay. I'm the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> and the, you're not going to stop it. It's not immoral. They're going to show up. This is the only thing they have in their lives. This is supposed to, this is, college is going to be the peak for nearly every young person in America. Every America going forward, forward, college will be the peak of their days. They view it as part party, part Faux intellectual. I'm I'm so amazing. I've tried to stop them wasting their monies and destroying their lives, but they'll have none of it. Now a lot of it is because we've never taught them anything else like love, trades, personal finance. You know how compound interest works. We've never we've never painted a. Uh, we've never given them a better option. Because let's admit it, most parents and teachers don't like the kids, love the kids, care about the kids. It's just a uh, push you on. Oh, yeah, call it. Yeah, man, it's all hard money. For Are you passionate? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, by the way, be a socialist. That's good. That's moral. That's moral and just. Okay. Make sure you do that. Yeah, just pay me my $70,000 with summers off because I'm a teacher. Um, <clears throat> Until we give them something else more important to look forward to in life. That's it. Don't you guys remember like that's I thought, oh, God, college This is finally where the smart people are. Finally, I get to be by myself. I'm an adult. Da -da 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 -da. The girls will actually be nice and show up on time. <laughs> what else are they going to do? Now, thankfully, with the Internet, we're getting an alternative message out there and, and other options like go in the trades, become a truck driver. Hell. Be a bartender or work as a wait staff. You'll still come on $100,000 ahead of your college-educated peers. And maybe the, the, the pile of ash that was the millennial generation before we nuked them from orbit with lies. Some of the younger kids are like, I, I don't need to go to college for $300,000 for a degree in art. So it's, it's getting out there, but the ones who showed up, uh, I honestly, you just take the money, man. Just take the money. Oh yeah. Fall hard. Money will fall. What? You're going to teach me. Uh, you're going to pay me $40 a credit hour. I teach. Okay. But if, if you got moral problems, which I completely understand, but you got to understand you're like, I can't stand drug dealers. Well, the drug dealers are just providing the supply. The drug addicts are also the ones making the choice. And these kids are addicted to vanity and ego and prestige and faux intellectualism and how great they are. And they're going to party and save the world. <clears throat> they're buying and they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. So I'd say keep dealing drugs, man. Deal drugs better than you ever had. If I had just dealt the drugs when I taught college, all right, I would have made a lot more money. Would have made a lot. And you know what I did in trying to teach the kids a little bit about the real world? All I did was like not be invited back to teach again. And then, but the last place I taught, I was one of the best teachers, according to the student ratings. <laughs> I just passed everybody. I taught what was in the book. I added some important practical finance stuff. So I, I did earn my moral keep there. But I I didn't like, I just, oh, what? You what? Okay, here we go. Same thing with banking. Try to stop the financial credit. No, no. It was good. And I didn't stop one kid, not one, in what, 15 years? I didn't stop an education bubble. I didn't stop a housing bubble. I didn't stop a banking crisis. 
make your money on stuff that is going to happen anyway. That train is going off the bridge no matter what. Forget your morality and trying to pull it and stop it with a with a thing of tooth, a, a, a dental floss. Push the train. It's going off the cliff anyway. Make your money. Look, why does it have to be socialist Marxist teachers that make all the money off of generations of young kids teaching them absolutely impractical, worthless, useless slop? Why can't us conservative libertarians simply not Marxist leftists say, oh, tell you what you want to hear. Here's the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're great and amazing because the way you were born and because you're plumbing downstairs. Give me the money. Oh, yeah. Here's your degree in women's studies. Bye. There's a stretch. I'll tell you this. I'll get to your question in a bit. There's a stretch between St. Thomas University, Atham, look this up, and University of Minnesota. Although the neighborhoods are getting a little bit more dangerous. And there's this nice stretch of houses on the on this parkway because it follows the Mississippi down. Nice houses. You know who lives there? Liberal arts professors. You know how they got the money? Lying to the kids. If they stopped them and told the kids the truth, would it have stopped the kids going to the prestigious little colleges? No. Who made the right choice? The leftist teachers who have a very nice house on the parkway. Although that, that <laughs> now your taxes going over. A couple of crimes happening over there in your, your prissy liberal world, huh? Huh? <clears throat> Did those riots almost make it to the Lake Street Bridge? Oh, wonder what will happen next time. You got to know the Twin Cities geography for that one. <clears throat> so I just throwing that out there. If you can get rid of your care, you're not going to change anything. They want their hair. Look, women want to be told the big is beautiful. Are you going to stop them? You go, whoa, hang on. That's unhealthy. You won't find love. You won't have good sex. Hold on, dude. Yeah, big is beautiful. Buy this shirt for $79.95. Buy these shoes. You're beautiful. You go, girl. $79.95 for this trinket. Oh, look at that purse. That's the power girl boss purse. $10,000. Well, I understand you're not a girl boss. Only real girl bosses could afford this purse. Oh, you came up with the financing at 17.89% to find the girl boss purse. Well, here you go. Well, you're a girl boss. <clears throat> truth is that purse would be more valuable than most of the degrees you girls are getting. And that is the truth. Make the money. They're going to pay no matter what. You might as well get some money. Our team might get some money. Might as well get some money. Uh, I've been asked to teach a class on banking for the first time, and I plan on teaching how it really is rather than the textbook fantasy land. If you were in my position, what would you teach in the class? All right. <clears throat> then I asked because, you know, banking is kind of a general topic. I said, um, is a class about how the banking industry works or more of a career-oriented class on how to work in banking? how the banking industry works. I teach another class called uh, a thing where I teach them about the skills to become a bank drone. Um, all right, <clears throat> here's, here's, here's my notes. All right. The overall arcing premise the the overall uh, way I would design the class is to show how government intervention and technology has more or less obsoleted the past 200 years, certainly the past 100 years of formalized financial uh, formulae and studies. <clears throat> I'm going to assume, um, you, you know, things like uh, the Fisher formula, uh, discounted cash flow evaluation techniques, credit risk analysis, all that. I would basically show how government inter because the whole point of the banking industry is to allocate money and resources, not only for its most efficient and profitable use and need, but at the lowest risk so that the bank and the investors get a rate of return, right? It's to, it's, it's risk management is, is really what it is. What I would point out is in general, how government intervention primarily that will bail you all out no matter what, which therefore removes the risk component, and technology which removes the mathematical wonk financial analytical components, all software now, has rendered the industry obsolete from an employment perspective and how it functions, all right? 
Now, more specifically, here are the things that I've come up with. All right. So first, show how technology and the index, specifically index investing or robo advisors, has replaced all forms of uh, arbitrage. Like the markets are not only incredibly efficient, but they're also horrendously manipulated. And so everything from discounted cash flow to market inference, but all that is just out the window. There's no reason for you to be a financial analyst, whether that's valuing equities or <clears throat> assessing risk or whatever else, uh, in part because it, it no longer applies and with government innovation, printing off money. We'll get to that later. But technology, you got analytical software, you got underwriting software, right? All you're going to be doing is, is data entry, right? Also related to this is you would say, okay, <clears throat> that's how it would be. In the ideal world, you would assess risk and analyze it. Even if you're using this software, you plug in the numbers in, then immediately tell them when you send that report with the numbers to your boss, your boss has a sales incentive. They don't care about the risks. They want to close the deal and get their commission because, and here's another important thing to point out about the banking industry, the banks rarely hold on to their loans anymore. They package them up and they sell them on the secondary market in the form of securities, whether that's mortgage backed or <clears throat> some form of asset backed security. So banks in their nature are really just um, brokerages or uh, sales churning entities. They're just brokering deals and passing. Someone else ends up holding it as the mutual fund, a pension or whatever else uh, have you. I would also then go and look at different banks' financial statements and analyze it, say, okay, a bank should work on the principle that it borrows at a lower rate from its depositors and it lends at a slightly higher interest rate to the, to the people it lends it to. And they make a profit off of the spread between the interest rate and they pay for things like marketing and employees and all that other stuff. If you go look at a modern day bank's income statement, <clears throat> that is, if you're lucky, half of their operations. The other half is where you get problem uh, clients. You say, well, why want problem clients? Because you could charge them fees, late fees. That's the last bank I will. Whoa, whoa, don't get rid of them. Like, why? They're always overdrafted. Well, that's why we make fees and monies off them. Show them essentially that they're the payday lender. Show them the dark side. Like, yeah, they don't care about underwriting or financial analysis. As a matter of fact, they like that. They want bad people because their profit model is not good loans at good interest rates. The profit model is we're going to babysit the financially inept and irresponsible and nickel and dime them and ding them with fees. <clears throat> also cross-selling credit cards, insurance products, investment products, especially the investment products which you don't need. Again, re-emphasize that the index beats all, nearly all actively managed financial professional doctorates. They don't. And if you want, use a case study, long-term capital management or any one of the bulge brackets that got caught with their pants down during the financial crisis to show that nothing, none of these people have the ability to predict the future. None of them. <clears throat> so that's what I would show is how the technology and index has replaced it. And then if you look at the true nature of, a, of banks, not necessarily investment houses, but banks, uh, you say, yeah, th this idea that you're going to analyze credit and all that, no. They're, they're, they're weaseling. I mean, would you like another case study? You should fill it with case studies of reality. How about Wells Fargo creating fake credit card accounts? How about that? Huh? I mean, you choose your poison. It's not like the banks are always oh, straightened up and flew right this time. <clears throat> so there's that. I would also point out the track record of the finance or banking industry. Um, that just, in not only because a, a legit analyst would say, this is bad, we can't do it, but you're going to be overridden by the lending committee or your boss is going to lecture you and you're going to be pressured to um, <clears throat> fabricate figures, essentially be fraudulent. Um, in part because of that, but even these spectacular analysts, they got a horrible track record. The mutual fund industry, they can't beat the index. Everyone keeps getting caught. Start, I don't know, do you want to do the SNL bailout? Go back to 1989 and you could do the financial crisis. <clears throat> we could do the current housing bubble right now. You could say, oh, look, look at this happen in real time. But economists and analysts and just the finance banking industry in general, 
are horrible at their job. And then you should say, all right, let's watch CNBC. Like, look at this guy. Let's go back into whatever, his background. Here's your analyst. What's this analyst? Oh, he's just been in television his entire life. He just knows how to how to talk about the hottest and latest things. Like, do you see how they really compare and contrast CNBC with TMZ? It's just gossip. Point out that <clears throat> TMZ, the gossip channel, CNBC, and then ESPN, all of it's the same. They're doing the analysis. Or you could throw in Fox News or CNN right there. He says, do you see how this is all the same? They are not providing financial analysis. They're providing entertainment under the false veneer that somehow the person watching this is intelligent and participating in it. <clears throat> you can point out these guys don't. If you don't want, go to, go go pull it up in the 90s. The CNBC crew just sucking the dick of Krispy Kreme donuts. Just go watch that. You don't believe that? Go back. If you can find it, 1997, 1998, early 1999, watch them all bringing in these annals. Well, we're looking at price to sales. Price to sales for dot coms. Price to sales. Uh, where's the profits? That's one you should put in your face. You should definitely talk about when they start talking about price to sales, there's something wrong because there's no profits underneath. And then another one you want to throw at Theranos with Elizabeth Holmes. Throw that in there. Here's all these horny white rich dudes that didn't want to be accused of the isms. And here comes a fraud and she was cute and bangable. And she, tee -hee, I need money. I'm, I'm the next Bill Gates. <laughs> and there's a good lesson in there. Yeah, you better be pretty if you want to work in that industry and have any kind of success. <clears throat> but in general, that the finance industry, banking industry, has failed at the one job it's supposed to do, and that is risk assessment. All right. Uh, <clears throat> consequently, because they're bad at risk assessment, third most important thing is say the real banking industry is the Federal Reserve or the central banks if you go overseas. And here you could point out like, look, we keep bailing out the banks. They're too big to fail. They've gotten accustomed to this. And you could show that by showing the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. See here where we bought all the crap thing and then we sold them off later. See here where we bought all the crap items, the crap securities. Right. <clears throat> the Federal Reserve, this is where the government intervention part comes in, basically has removed any risk involved in it. Now, the, the feds are shoved up people's ass. Here's, a, here's the con where you say, all right, so you think you're going to be doing discounted cash flow or credit risk sensitivity or interest rate sensitivity and all that. No, you know what you're going to be doing? You're going to be filling out compliance forms because of uh, <clears throat> Frank Dodd. What was it? Way back in the day. Because after the housing crisis, the feds came in with a vengeance and required all these banks to have all these reports and all these regulations. And rightfully so. Because and you can get to this later. Bankers are morons. They're lazy dude bros who wanted engineer salaries without engineer work. That's it. That's all it is. So they're wheeling and dealing. <clears throat> but because of that, <laughs> they're enough, but they're in charge of a pretty critical part of the economy. Now you have uh, the Federal Reserve not only coming in and bailing them out, but the federal government saying, you're acting like a douchebag. We're going to be up your ass so far. And that's really what about 75% of your work is going to be in a bank, whether it's commercial or an investment bank, is federal compliance. Why are we doing it this way? Because some boomer bankers 15 years ago F things up. Why are we doing it this way? The answer is boomer bankers F things up. <clears throat> and I'd have them watch the big short. Like, here's how it really works, boys and girls. And then also... Have them get my first book behind the housing crash because that's more bank the the uh, what's it called the big short that was on the investment side. Mine was on the underwriting side behind the housing crash. That's where you see how the loans were still getting approved despite horrible fundamentals. Um, <clears throat> that would be a mandatory book. Look, hey, all those professors get to require that the kids got to buy their book, right? Why not? Why can't can't be? Why can't old Gil get a break? Why can't old Gil get some of that sweet, sweet money? Come on, old, give old Cappy a break. Have that mandatory reading. I like a little bit of money coming my way. Uh, but joking aside, and my own financial investment on that aside, 
It's a damn good book to show you how things actually happen in banking. Very good uh, book, I might say. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, now it is obeying federal regulators, whether that's OCC or Department of Treasury or whatever. And yet at the same time, well, we don't have to. Deep down inside, everyone knows the Federal Reserve, the central bank, will bail them out. And you can take a look at housing loans being made today. I'm nowhere near as couth as I was about current housing markets and bank lending standards now as I was before. Uh, but if you just look at the Federal Reserve, like, look, it, oh, uh, what's his name? Jerome Powell of the Fed, who taketh away the sin of boomer bankers. Print off more money. And you just look, they're, they're buying crap assets. They're buying everyone's mistakes at the expense of the American tax. Well, the American people, because we print off the money. So you pour it on working people, get to pay for it too. <clears throat> um, but more importantly, as it participate, uh, pertains to the Federal Reserve, not only being, you know, Jerome Powell of the Fed who taketh away the sins of the economy. Uh, but in printing off more money and lowering interest rates, that now obsoletes any kind of risk or valuation assessment. Like this kind of cash flow, that was a joke to begin with. That is a that is a joke long gone now. That is a joke 20 years old. Certified financial analysts, what? What are you, your valuation techniques are completely obsolete. <clears throat> whatever's in that book, that textbook is gone. You know what determines value of her appraisal purposes? Like you're gonna, interest rates and how much money did we print off? That's it. That's what determines economics. Now, how much money did we print off? What are interest rates? Forget industrial production, although that's now going into <clears throat> more uh, economics and labor economics. But in terms of uh, uh, financial prices, asset prices, what's the interest rates? And how much money did we print off? It's all the Fed. All right. So now a fourth or fifth thing, whatever, and now traditional forms of risk assessment and valuation, they're out the window. They're just out the window. It's interest rates and money printing. That's it. <clears throat> so now that you have basically an industry that's obsoleted, effectively a quasi-government backed if not certainly regulated, almost kind of a fascist type of industry. The government controls it <clears throat> or regulates it so much. And also it creates the interest rate and uh, monetary environment by which the financial industry sits in. It's kind of a, not necessarily a fascist organization. It is a regulatory, it's a regulated utility. That's really the better way to look at banking. It's a regulated utility. Uh, now, not perfectly like it, but that's that's the closest thing you have at approximating to. <clears throat> and so consequently, the culture that they're going to be going into kind of has to understand this. All right, first, it's a dying thing. All right, it's absolute. You don't need investment professionals. You know, it's, it's all software. It's all. This. So the only people really going into it are dude bros, but who really want to get into finance, bro. Because at one time, there, you might have been an analyst. There might have been some authentic hard work you had to do. All right. Now, it's just say you're an investment banker and you work on Wall Street or you're a commercial lender or something like that. When in reality, there is really no work and it's just wheeling and dealing with the insurance of the taxpayer backing you up. And since there really is no work, there's no way to distinguish yourself Except to, what was it beforehand, boys and girls? Suck dick. That's it. And it's just a continuation of high school. Now, it depends. Like, okay, that's Wall Street, certainly. <clears throat> some of the higher up end banks. All right. Uh, but when you get to the, the lower level, but there's nothing to do, man. You're just there for compliance purposes, regulatory purposes. That's it. Banks are shedding. Like, have you noticed everything's online banking now? Like you don't go to a downtown office. I guess we could throw something in there and not about remote work. Uh, but there's nothing there. This is no different than selling insurance or selling cars. It's not like there's real work. It is just a sales job now, especially if you want to get into the high finance sales. There's no analytical work there. You might have a nerd or a wonk. Maybe in a hedge fund, there might be some authentic old school finance and economics and analysis and statistics going on. But in the banking industry, no. 
you're going to start as a teller or an analyst, which is a data entries man, or you're going to be a banker and bankers are selling. And depending on how, how high really ranked your bank is, you're either going to real, uh, you're doing commercial lending at big time corporations. <clears throat> we're there. <laughs> or you're in the banks I was at where you're like, Jessup, the sister fornicate and yokel wants to get a loan on a semi truck. And you're like, no, <laughs> well, hold on no. I know Jessup is his own brother's sister's father, but hang on, you know, Jessup's a hard, he's a good guy. He's a good, you'd be amazed how many good people there are at, who have 400 credit scores. All right, but you're still, you're still selling. You're still trying to, you're still, you don't need to go to school for that. You don't need to know how a, a functional financial system or banking system should work. You're just going to be a salesman. And you could maybe even just go to a bank. Hey, let me, let me work as a salesman. I'll get, I'll, I'll make it rain. I'll bring in some, some loans. So it's now, it's, it's, if you get to any kind of <clears throat> reputable or sizable bank, and especially if you go Wall Street or high finance, it's dude, bro. Related more than ever now because it just isn't the need. You got to be Ivy League or Blue Blood or off or on the East Coast. Uh, you get to live in New York. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this, the v the veneer of live in LA where all the action is at Wall Street. And the money, that's going away. Uh, the Josh Fluke kids of the world are realizing it's vain and it's stupid. And the only people left are these people who hold on to this outdated, quickly being obsoleted idea that finance and banking is something fun or high powered or prestigious. You know, they see Wolf of Wall Street and they jerk off to it. I'm going to become like that. What a criminal. <clears throat> so it's now like the douchiest of the douchey left in that industry. Elkins talks about this. I'll give you another parallel example. In the accounting world, like people are kind of slowly waking up. Like you don't want to work for the big four. It's nuts. But there's still that core group of true believers like the big four oh my god that's the only it's like no you don't want to work there go work for yourself um so you're only going to have the the zealots the fanatics stuck in this and man like it was already a mentally ill place to begin with you don't want to be going into that now so i don't know how you'd fit that employment aspect or the culture aspect into it but maybe fit in there um yeah, I talked about like remote work, how like here's another cultural thing. Like you're not going to a downtown office anymore. You're going to if you're going to go somewhere, it's going to be uh, <clears throat> some nondescript industrial looking building or commercial building out in the burbs. You're going to spread spreadsheets and data entry. That's all you're going to do. You're not going to use your degree. That's what every entry. I mean, here we're going to learn Excel. What was it? Logan? That was the system I used in, in Wells Fargo. Um, and then they'll promote the people who create fake credit card accounts. Like, oh, he's a real good salesman. It's all sales. That's all it is. Um, and then I guess finally, I don't know how you would, but point out that all this high finance is very academic. Like you're never going to use it. You never will. I, I, interestingly enough, when I went through school, I had a degree in finance. They never taught me how to underwrite a loan. There was no debt service coverage ratio. There was nothing about like rating loans or anything like that. That never happened. Uh, they they do these lofty jokes of things like, ooh, the whatever, the, uh, the Phillips curve, <clears throat> the Fisher formula. And like, how come interest rates are, yeah, I learned about the borrowing and that's where the Federal Reserve comes in and they lend at 0%. And that's why the Fisher formula doesn't matter anymore. Um, you just got to show them like, look, all this stuff comes, and you could find out like, well, who came up with the Phillips curve? Who came up with the Fisher formula? All right, so this guy came up with it in 1967. And you'll notice if we use the FRED database, it doesn't hold for Jack, especially in the past 10 years. You, you could you could show like this is, I think, a good segment about the efficacy and the track record of finance and banking <clears throat> as a uh, tool, like in terms of how good the formulas and the tactics and the techniques work. You say this is all academic hokum. 
It's pointless. Here, I would, if you really want to do banking, you really want to help these kids out, teach them how to underwrite a loan. Teach them how to uh, grab a Schedule C. Teach them how to read uh, balance sheets, not balance sheets, uh, tax returns. All right. Here's a 1120S corporation filing. Here's your Schedule C. Here's how you back out the K-1 distributions. I made a mistake like that a long time ago. Um, you know, here's what a debt service coverage ratio is. Here's loan to value. Not taught, not taught. That's what I would teach. Teach commercial underwriting. You should be able to find something online, get a book on it and just regurgitate it in your PowerPoint. You're not going to have it. I'm sure your school doesn't have it because that would be practical. But yeah, I mean, even something like tax statement analysis, here are your different key tax returns you're going to run into. What is a Schedule A? What is a distribution? <clears throat> what is a Schedule E? That would be for property. Schedule E would be very important as well. That's going to carry them further. Uh, but that that's why I throw them. Um, so ultimately, theory versus practice. Like, okay, here's what the book says. And I would like spend a little bit of time on the book because here's how it really works. Like first half of the class, here's what the book says. Second half of the class, here's how it really works. Um, And then I would... Start hitting them up like what you really want to read: Thomas Solwell, Larry Hazlitt, Scott Adams, books on crypto. <laughs> Teach them, scare them with a little bit of inflation. So here's the money supply. Bloop. Yeah, eh, don't worry, it's transitory. Get them behind the housing crash. Please get them that one. That'll that'll set them straight. And then honestly, what I would do is say, look, guys, I know you're all got your say, but go into the trades or engineering. Like, don't you, know, if you're going to go to school, go into accounting, probably accounting would be a better sell, go into engineering, but for God's sake, like really try and save the kids, like your degree in business or marketing or HR that isn't going to cut it. It's completely worthless. Like go become a plumber, <clears throat> go become a mechanic, something, but like, don't do this. There, there's not, there's no future for anyone who's slightly competent or moral or has some self-respect in banking. Show them this video. Say, hey, here's the guy. You could believe him or not. Uh, you know, I, I wish I should I should try and find some of my old bosses, see what happened to them. I a lot of them just left. They never went back to banking. And I'm kind of like, God, I you know, like, well, you could point that out. I know one of my bosses ended up becoming a realtor. <laughs> you know, like that was the president of a division. And uh, now that person's a realtor. Or was a realtor back in the day, anyway. They say, look at it. Like, this, this is a, that's another thing. They say, look, this is a flooded market. All these small little community banks. The key, you could go to the, um, oh, what was it? You can look up banks' rates of return. They're because they're guaranteed by the Federal Reserve, not the Federal Reserve, by the. Oh, come on, Clary. FDIC. The FDIC has a bank institution. Look up. Go look up their finances. Look up like these small little crappy banks. See, they're not making any money. They're lending it to Jessup so he can buy himself another sister. <clears throat> and that's it. You know, don't get political. You know, don't talk about Democrats or, you know, fiscal policy or anything like that. You just, just point out that, you know, the industry is pretty corrupt and inept. And then, uh, and then implore them to get the hell out. That's what I would do. Oh, and you know what? You know what, dude? Give them all A's. Just give them all A's. We'll make it so stupidly easy for them to pass. Because let's be honest, they got other classes they got to take, right? And and you're not going to save anyway. It's not critical what you're teaching. Like how banking works in theory, that's not critical. And you're telling them the truth. That's critical. They'll know that. So I just give them an easy freaking A. Make it borderline impossible for them to get anything but an A minus or higher. Oh. Shaft driven metal, five generous dollars again. Do you think the repealing of Glass-Steagall attributes to some of the over leveraging risk in the current banking sector? Yeah, but I think they repealed that a while ago. Um, <clears throat> God, and I'd have, that was what? That separated commercial lending from investment banking or sale, I'd have to go back and review. It didn't help. Look, guys, bankers are scum. They're scum. They don't want to work. That's why they're bankers. They want to wheel and deal and make the deals, bro. 
Boats and hoes. Boat. Have Have you noticed? Whoa. Where'd that go? Um, have you noticed all the movies about Wall Street are all about people committing crime and fraud? That's how you make money? That's it's not a coincidence. Um, yeah, you need to be you. I, I'm not big for re, uh, for regulation or nationalization, but the banking industry, American bankers, that community has proven themselves to be the most corrupt, inept, criminal douchebags on the face of the planet. That uh, planet, the uh, planet, yeah, planet. Why did that that sound right? Planet, yeah, the world. You almost there's almost a compelling argument to nationalize. The only reason I'm against nationalization is the only thing worse and more corrupt than bankers are politicians and government workers. You need an enforcement division, the Cappy Enforcement Division, and we're not. I'm not officers. They're different. The OCC, the Postal Service, they have a an officer that officers like with guns and arresting powers. I mean enforcement, like I come in and I bash your legs in. Hey, your Oreo portfolio looks a little high. Why haven't you sold it yet? Oh, really? Bash, bash, bash. Let's make sure it's a little bit less the next time I come in. And all we do got to do is bash a couple bankers' legs in. Rumor would spread really quickly. And I think the fear of having their legs bashed in might tighten up the finance sector of the U.S. economy a little bit. Oh, Elizabeth Holmes. Oh, geez. How you doing? No, you won't be making it to the trial. No, no. We have something else in mind for you. Did you see what happened? Oh, my God. She got hit by a truck and can barely talk. Oh, gee. I wonder if we should be more fraudulent. I wonder what happens to fraudsters in this economy when they raise billions with that. I wonder what happens. <clears throat> That's the only thing they respond to. Uh, Mark Sweetner, sweet, sweet, sir. 10 bucks. Cap, I live in Henderson. So if next time you're at Southern Command, I'd like to buy you a beer or eight. Yeah, Cappy ain't drinking no more. It ain't fun. Uh, but you can get me a cigar. We'll go to the man cave. Go to the man cave. That's on the south side. Chef, Turner, no, geez, man. Chef, what you got going on? Nothing. 10 bucks. Well, yeah, my uncle has been a financial planner for 20 years. However, I know more about economics by just reading Thomas Sowell and a handful of other authors. Yeah, I mean, there are some legit financial planners like where people need that human experience. They need the human touch. They just don't trust themselves to invest in the index um, and invest regularly and spend less than they make. Some people want a lot of hand-holding. I'm okay with it because at least it gets them invested. But financial planners are obsolete, Which, but it's technically different than banking. He's teaching a class on banking, so I didn't want to delve into the other arenas. Uh, I think we're caught up. Oh, one more. David Frost, five bucks. <clears throat> I want to escape my lifelong labor sentence as soon as possible. In a year when I am 19, I will have 40K saved up. Should I buy a house or buy a business? Dave, how the F do I know, man? What house? What business? Does the business make a lot of money? You get a good deal? Why would you buy a business? Why don't you start a business? You don't just buy businesses. Dude, I'm going to buy a business. Well, wait, why don't you start one? It's probably going to be cheaper. You know what you're doing by the time you get it up and running. <clears throat> no offense, you're 19. You shouldn't be running a business. Um, I, if, if I had a choice at your age, I would buy a house because you can live in it. But you could buy the wrong house at the wrong time. But But generally, I would buy a house at 19. <clears throat> but I want to buy a house at 19. I Go get recon Here, David, here's what you do, okay? Before you spend any of that money, go get reconnaissance, man, right? For $12.95 or whatever it is, go buy reconnaissance, man, and read it. You need to figure out where to live first before you buy a house. That's the most important thing. You caught up. David Frost, five bucks. I want to buy a business so I could pay it off and sell it to buy a home and passive investment, work hard in my late teens and 20s. No, no, okay. David, you're going to buy a business so you can sell it at a profit? Why don't you just buy some stock then? You don't want to run the business. You just want to buy at a low price now to sell it for more later? That's what buying stocks is. Minus all the work and labor that goes into running the business. Uh, no, you don't know what you're doing. No. Uh, you know what you should do on top of reconnaissance, man? You should read Bachelor Pad Economics. 
the whole thing except for the point where you get to um, estate planning because you're not going to die anytime soon. Please read through all that. Do all the stuff that's in that book. And, and then when you can read an, an income statement and you have years experience in a field that you would know when to buy a business that is, is a good value, what do they teach you kids in high school? You just buy a business, bro. What do, are you are you listening to like scammy red pill guy? Like, just buy a business, bro. Yeah, bro. Wheeling and dealing. It's the deal. Gotta get financing. No, no, you're a 19 year old kid and you don't know Jack. How about you go get a career or a trade or a job? And you work hard. That's fine. That's all good. And then if you want to buy a business. Only for the sole purpose of selling it for more later, you don't have to buy an actual business which would require you to run it. You would buy a stock or a group of stocks or a real estate investor. You 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 buy a, a, a security, stocks and bonds, that kind of thing, with the hope, not the guarantee. Do you hear me, David? Without the guarantee, there is no guarantee the stock will go up. It could go down, but that's the same risk you face with buying a business in the real world. And then selling it later. Because if you don't keep up the profits, no one's going to buy you for a, buy a money losing business off your hands. So way people say, I want to get into real estate. I'm like, well, do you own a house? No, but I want to get into real estate. Do you want to buy a house? No, I just want to get into real estate. Well, should I buy a property and flip it, bro? No, no, no. Just buy a real estate investment trust. Diversified real estate investment trust, which can go down in value, by the way. And then you're exposed to real estate. But yeah, you're doing it way harder, way harder. Rahul Sh Shattery, Shatter G, sorry, <clears throat> our Indian agent in the field for 100 Indian rupees. Cappy, please explain Inflation Reduction Act to a layman. I don't know. I Rahul, I wish I knew what it was. I don't pay attention to news anymore. Um, You could look up on the internet what's in there. But from what people have said, again, I don't, it's stimulus. It's just more spending which will cause more inflation. Don't don't listen to what the politicians call it. Okay? That has nothing to do with what it is. Look at what's in the bill and it'll tell you. Right? Is there more spending? That means we got to print off more money or borrow more money. <clears throat> That's going to increase price. That's more inflation. Like an inflation reduction act would be very simple. It would be a two it could be one of two prongs or both. The first one would be we're lowering the money supply. That would be an Inflation Reduction Act, but you wouldn't need an act of Congress to do that. It wouldn't be a law. The Federal Reserve would just start buying in the money. They'd start increasing the reserve requirement ratios, be pulling money out of the economy. So that would lower inflation. I guess you could increase interest rates too, which is what they're doing. Uh, and the second thing of this pillar to lower inflation is you increase production. The most direct way would be to cut off all forms of welfare or severely cut it to the point that people are forced to get jobs and produce more. So then you'd have an increase of the supply of goods on the same amount of money, which would also lower inflation. <clears throat> but if it's if it's Congress, I can almost guarantee you it's a bunch of stimulus spending and pork that just is going to cause more inflation. But the American people, American politicians are dumb enough to, to oh, inflation. It'd be like. The Aaron Clary's nine inch cock act. I don't have a nine inch cock. Flaccid, by the way. Let's see. Aaron Clary's fl nine inch flaccid cock. Okay. Act. That doesn't mean I got a nine inch flaccid cock. It's just like, oh, it's only that big. Oh, dang. Oh, he is Scandinavian. Oh, too bad. <laughs> I don't know if Scandinavians have small dicks. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I can almost guarantee if you look at it, it's more spending, right? Is it more spending? Okay, that's inflation. David Frost, two bucks. I work for myself at 18. Good. Why don't you keep making that money then and, and not sell your business? What do you make per year? Not your sales. Not your sales. What's your take home? Justified misogyny. <laughs> Five bucks. Should 2I apply to a new job, even though it may inhib inhibit my ability to build up my side hustle due to time, time constraints and having to work on site? How much you make it on your side hustle? Here's how you analyze it. You make $10 an hour on your side hustle. The new job will pay you $15 an hour. Take the new job. The new job pays $15 an hour, but your side hustle earns you $20. do not take the new job. 
I'm just going to assume your side hustle doesn't make a lot of money. All right? That's it. That's your cost benefit analysis. David Frost, five bucks again. <clears throat> I make 3,500 a month do not, due to not going to college, graduating a year early. Awesome. All right. So 3,500 a month. All right. That's take home. 3,500 times 12. 42 grand. So you're bringing in 60 gross, roughly. That's very good, David. That's great. Now, why would you give up that cash flow? I mean, you could sell your business, but what could you, you could, you could pretty much just sell your assets that you own and your book of business. Now, are you going to get enough money to go buy a house? You don't even know where you want to live right now. Uh, I don't know. I That's a job, man. Just keep working it. Make your money. <clears throat> I mean, it's not going to hurt you to find out what someone might be willing to pay you for your for your business. But um, I don't know. I would just keep look. You're making more than the average college graduate with no debt. Don't don't screw it up, man. Just keep working and enjoy it. Oh, Michael Kingswood, uh, who has books available to you at noncommunistsciencefiction.com. Do you like communist? Uh, do you like science fiction? You do, but you don't like communism? Man, very few books out there that are like that. It's all communist science fiction now, isn't it? But none of you go to noncommunistsciencefiction.com where you can buy my buddy Michael Kingswood's books, which are varied in many, a lot. Short stories, long stories, series, uh, a lot of space, but then also uh, uh, fantasy fiction. You know, like trolls and, and dragons and stuff like that. He's all over the place. He is literally the most prolific writer I know. He he writes tons of books. So take a look at noncommunistsciencefiction.com. When I was in the Pentagon in 2008, we knew the budget was untenable because entitlements were already greater than the Department of Defense then. Everyone knew it, but we also knew no one would address it. And they haven't. Yep. I don't care. I got my crypto. There's a country song in there. I got my crypto. I got my guns. I got my pickup truck. Boom, 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 boom. Although in Wyoming, I got my sister, I got my mother, I got my mouth. Boom, 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 boom. Michael Kings would fight. God, somebody. <laughs> I can't write the music, but I can write the lyrics to an incredibly mocking and ridiculing country song you guys seen country song music videos recently i gotta get savo on this it, i'll grow a beard in the thing and i'll get a plaid shirt and a cowboy hat and we'll sing the most derogatory song cowboy song about meth and suicide and fat women and um stimmy checks and uh incest and but it would be like a real <clears throat> i'd be strumming the guitar and someone would not i'd have to lip sync it i think unless the voice tuning is so good nowadays we could actually we could make a music video <laughs> oh i could do it man i could do it <laughs> i just need some other talented people to do the musical part of it oh uh, that said, my sixth Glimmervale book, that's his uh, uh, fantasy fiction uh, book released yesterday, Super Fun Fantasy Adventure, and it's a real pro Yeah, those are real books. That is no joke. Those are real, um, they're thick books, real books. Noncommunistsciencefiction.com. You ever going to come visit, Mike? You could kind of visit. You kind of bachelor of the world. Uh, all right. See you guys later. Toodles.